Got a quick video, which is that Palantir is going to be holding its earnings for Q1 on May 9th in the morning at 8 a.m. They will be doing a live stream, doing the earnings release, of course, and the Q&A section. Again, this will be a live video feed for the second quarter in a row. I'm expecting Sham Sankar to be leading the call. We haven't heard anything on Alex Karp. I do not believe he will be in attendance. But today, I just want to quickly run through my questions that I submitted in the Q&A section and give you a chance to submit your own if you want to with the link in the description or upvote mine either way. Just wanted to make it clear that you have the opportunity to do so as a shareholder. So here we have my three questions. You're able to submit three questions. I always get caught off guard because I never know when they're going to post this. Early on, the more votes you get, the better and the higher the questions will rise, the better a chance you can get at getting these answered if you are early on and never really know when Palantir is going to release this. So it is a bit of a guessing game, but luckily one of my questions was early enough to get upvoted. I really like this question. It's, can Alex Karp and management present a long-term master plan that explains strategic goals, product development, and more detailed financial guidance? So the inspiration from this question, I was recently talking about this with JG from Palantrillion, and the inspiration from this question came from my discussion with Dave Lee on Palantir. Here's a clip of that. Has Alex Karp given any like mega long-term concrete vision? And what I, what I mean by that is, for example, Elon Musk, you know, back in 2000, I don't know, like early, early on, he was saying, hey, we're going to make, you know, this mass market affordable electric car, right? And um, then later on, maybe 2012 or 13, he would say, hey, we're going to make 500,000 of these, you know, um, mass market cars by 2018 or 2020 actually 2020 was his initial goal so it was it's it's a combination of you have an exact number of units right you have a revolutionary product a new product that's addressing a big need and then elon followed up with this whole idea of 20 million cars right by 2030 so he has a clear number a time frame like a goal post and it's clear what that will do. Like 20 million would just revolutionize, you know, climate change and impact. Does Alex, has Alex Karp ever, ever given something like that? Eight, five years, 10 years down the road, this is the number or the this type of product or something, what Palantir is shooting for or, or going for? Is there any, I mean, I know he's given like a 30% or higher revenue growth for the next, you know, four to five years. I mean, that's, you know, a guidance, but that's, that doesn't mean much to me. It's just numbers, right? I mean, it, it doesn't give this like, you know, a crazy ambitious goal that's tangible, you know? So I really hope we can get this answered. If it's not on this quarterly call, maybe it could be something that gets discussed on the annual shareholder meeting. Either way, I think having Alex Karp or someone, doesn't matter really who it is, but be able to set forth a plan, put it in writing about the company. We obviously as shareholders are aware of the goals and the product development, but I feel like something a lot more tangible could be definitely something to point to for potential investors and for setting a direction and a true path forward for the company. So I really do think this is a good question. And then my second question was, can you comment on the SPAC partnership strategy and its impact on the financials? What is the level of diligence for initiating such an investment? I think this is very important. We've seen of some of Palantir SPACs really turned out to be not the greatest investments, not only monetary, but there's been some drama there with Faraday Futures, for instance. So I'd like to get an answer on this, what's happening in terms of how they're selecting these SPACs and could they be doing a better job? Of course, the answer is probably yes, and maybe we could get some color on that. So that was my second question. And finally, my last question was, can you share an update on how the investment in a sales team has paid off thus far? So I think this is another point that they could address a lot of stock-based compensation and other spending is going towards this sales team. So getting an update on how that investment has been paying off would be awesome to see and as well as any discussion on how the sales team will be developing in the future I think would be great. So once again, I want to thank you for voting for my questions if you end up doing so and please vote for your own. We've got the earnings call coming up on May 9th. Let me know what you want from me in terms of a preview of this Q1 earnings release. Thank you. Until next time.